Hello everybody, it's Hare Smith. I'm uh, here to talk today about a couple of interesting little words. Now, you all know, since like the very first day of class, that we're studying a language called Deutsch, right? And uh, we can talk about das Deutsche Buch, die Deutsche Stunde, die Deutsche Le Leute, anything. German can be an adjective, right? So German, Deutsch, is the name of language. You can use it as an adjective. Das Deutsche Essen, the German food. Das Deutsche Bier, the German beer. So Deutsch is a noun. Uh, Deutsch is the language, but it's also an adjective you can put in front of anything. And you can also talk about the people, die Deutschen, the Germans. And of course there's a country, Deutschland. So if we have this word Deutsch, and it's a noun, it's an adjective, we use it in all these ways, here's the question for today. What do we mean when we say die Germanen? There is this word, die Germanen. Those are not the Germans, right? Because die Deutschen, those are the Germans. So who are die Germanen? Die Germanen are Germanic tribes. Germanic is different than German. Uh, we're going to have to do a deep dive on history. Remember, the country of Germany has only existed since 1871. So going way, way back in time, there have been people speaking German and German-related languages. They've been having German culture, German music, German food, German dance, German clothing, all the way back. But they weren't actually Germans until 1871. So we have to turn back time, which was a hit song by Cher in the uh, late 80s, if I could turn back time. But we have to turn back time and figure out what were the Germanic tribes. A little map work might be in order here. So a long time ago, several thousand years ago, there was a group of people called the Germanic tribesmen. They were a single group of people, um, and they spoke a language which is an ancestor of modern German, and their culture was Germanic, um, and they lived sort of in the center of Europe. As time went by, this one group sort of broke up into little bits and pieces, and there were different different groups that sort of emerged from it. There was the Goths, there was the Bavarians, there were the Saxons, there were the Angles, there were the Frisians, and a whole bunch of others. The Vikings, of course, were Germanic tribesmen, as were the ancestors of the Icelandic people, the Norwegian, Swedish, Danish people, etc., etc., etc. So over a period of time, this one group the Germanic tribesmen, broke into a whole series of groups called the Germanic tribes. Uh, they were mobile, they were fluid, and if you look at these maps, you can see that the boundary lines kind of move and people move. Uh, things don't stay static. Um, eventually, over long periods of time, they developed their own identities and became the ancestors of the modern nations that we know as Germanic nations, and they developed uh, the, the current forms of their languages, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, etc., 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 and of course German. So the history of Europe includes uh, the, these Germanic tribes. Now, if you look at the maps, you will see there are other tribes. There were Slavic tribes. There were Celtic tribes. Uh, there were Roman and Greek tribes. Uh, we call them tribes instead of countries because the idea of a permanent, definite, geographical boundary line hadn't existed yet. These people were not totally nomadic, but they were semi-nomadic, and they kind of, you know, would shift place from time to time. So they couldn't draw lines on a map the way you can nowadays and say, this is Italy, and this is Switzerland, and this is Austria, and this is Poland. Uh, the, the space, the use of the land was a little bit more ambiguous, a little more changing. Uh, when they did settle down, in fact, that emerges uh, 
marks the emergence of the modern idea of a nation as a state, as a country, if you will. Anyway, uh, this is kind of what is meant when we say Germanic. It's relating to this common root, an ancestral root of language and culture. So that's the way it was back in the day. Those parts of Europe were carved up and occupied by Germanic tribes. Well, come back to the present day, like right now, the word Germanic still has a use and a meaning. The meaning of Germanic now is to describe the modern nations which exist as sort of children or great-grandchildren of those ancient tribes. Germanic nations are now things like Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Holland, Iceland, those kinds of places, parts of Belgium, Luxembourg, etc., etc. They are not German. They are Germanic. Swedish or Norwegian, the languages are not German, but they are Germanic languages. The culture, the music, the food, etc., etc., is not German, but it's Germanic. So watch for this word, right? Here we got it in the adjective form. Deutsch, right? Or Germanisch. So for example, here, uh, this is a neat little thing you can spend your uh, summertime with laying on the beach. You might read a book like this, a Germanischer Guttersagen. What is that? Germanic, not German, Germanic tales of divinities, right? This is a way back in the day, the polytheistic mythology and all the rest of that. Uh, this is what they thought thousands of years ago. So Germanic roots go back thousands of years. Uh, we can find Germanic things as far back as, let's say, 1000 BC. Archaeological excavations have shown early Germanic settlements, etc., etc. Um, German, only since 1871, really, as a nation. Uh, the German language emerged earlier than 1871. Uh, it emerged from among the many Germanic languages. So you started with one common language that gradually broke off into bits and pieces. So the modern languages that are now things like Danish, Icelandic, Norwegian, Swedish, Dutch, those are all sort of branches in a family tree. And the great-great-grandfather of all of those different languages was the original Germanic language. And German is one of the descendants of that language. So just play around with this in your mind, the difference between Deutsch and Germanisch. Uh, you're going to run into that in history. You're going to run into that in literature, in music, etc., etc. All right, that's all for today.